Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, I appreciate it so much and I want to thank my subscribers I already have. They, they are so nice and I appreciate it so much. Well, J.P. Morgan, CEO, predicts what's coming next. I don't know if I've got any good news on all these articles tonight or not. You know, you just did like um, one of my helpers that does my yard work they said just don't let it go to your head but what do you do you know America is at risk here either way you look at it so how can you not help letting it go to your head well just don't think about it really every day you go to the grocery store you think about it every day you hear Biden say a speech you think about it <laughs> Oh well. The CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase last week warned of very, very serious headwinds that will plunge the U.S. and global economy into a recession by the middle of 2023. Well, we've got a good start right now, I think. I could be wrong, like I've said many times. You know, Jamie Dimon told CNBC's Juliana Tatabaum last Monday that a combination of inflation, high interest rates, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine will likely push the U.S., the rest of the world, into some kind of recession in the next six to nine months, but it's already started. Despite the current challenges facing the U.S. economy, the J.P. Morgan Chase CEO believes the U.S. economy, economy uh, was still doing well, nothing that Europe is already in recession, noting that Europe is already in recession. He told CNBC that the U.S. consumers will likely fare better in this recession than they did during the 2008 financial crisis in which the economy was hammered by housing foreclosures and mass layoffs. And I just read today or heard today on another channel, there's going to be thousands of more layoffs in the very near future and you know um, around the holidays it never fails the factories start laying people off around the holidays some are lucky to get a little back pay maybe possibly but then some are just left without and it's always around the holidays you know many years ago I could never figure that out and I still haven't many years later why do they pick the holidays to lay people off that don't make sense to me but anyway diamond also criticized the federal research for waiting too long and doing too little in raising interest rates to cool a 40-year high inflation now the fed is clearing clearly catching up diamond added he said now we can only keep our fingers crossed that the fed can slow down the economy Asking about the severity and the duration of an, an upcoming recession, Diamond wasn't sure. He said depending on what happens with the war in Ukraine, it can go from very mild to quite hard. The best thing to do, Diamond added, was to be prepared. Diamond also predicted that the S&P 500, 500 could easily drop by another 20% and that the next 20% would be much more painful than the first. Earlier this month, the KPMG survey found that 90% of CEOs believe a recession will occur in the next 12 months. It's already started. As to how severe this recession might be, only 34% believe it will be brief and not too painful. The vast majority expect the looming recession will be a difficult one. At PatriotRight.com Yeah, like I said, I just don't know. Well, here's another one. My goodness. Russia blocked from investigation findings. Russia blocked from pipeline investigating findings last Monday. Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena 
Madaliana, Erlina, Mag Magdalena, Anderson, Magdalena, Anderson said Sweden would not share the findings from its investigation into the explosions of the Nord Stream gas pipelines with Russia authorities or the state-run national nat natural gas giant Gazprom. The Swedish crime scene investigated into investigation into the Nord Stream 1, Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines from Russia to Europe found evidence of detonations and prosecutors suspect sabotage. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, who would want to blow up them pipes, you know? It's got to be a bad enemy somewhere. The week before Russian Prime Minister Mikhail McHouston, Miss Houston, I'm so sorry if I don't pronounce these names correctly. Oh, but anyway, I apologize. Wrote to the Swedish government demanding the Russian authorities, Gazprom officials be involved in the investigation, but Sweden refused. And on Monday, Sweden made it clear that even the findings of their investigation will be off limits as well. I wonder why. Prime Minister Anderson said last Monday that the government won't share the findings with Russia authorities since in Sweden investigations are always confidential, including in this case. However, Anderson conceded that Sweden could not stop Russian vessels from visiting the site of the explosions, which were located within Sweden's economic zone now that the crime scene investigation has been completed. Now, why would Russia's vessels want to go see? What do they say only the criminal returns to the crime? Okay, leave me your thoughts. On Thursday, Sweden also rejected plans to set up formal joint investigation team with Denmark and Germany to look into the pipeline explosions. Mats Lejongvist, the prosecutor investigating the leaks, said Sweden was already cooperating with Germany and Denmark on the matter but would reject the proposal for a joint investigation team, JIT, from Eurogist, the Judicial Cooperation Agency. Eurogist, E-U-R-O-J-U-S-T, Eurogist the Judicial Cooperation Agency. The Eurojust investigation would require Sweden to share the information from its criminal investigation, which it will not do since the investigation is confidential because it is directly linked to national security. The spokesperson for Swedish Security Services told Reuters, Reuters that the security police were closely cooperating with others internationally internationally as part of the criminal investigation. The German Federal Police completed their portion of the investigation into the alleged sabotage and have already handed over their findings. Yeah, that uh, <clears throat> saying, uh, criminals always, uh, usually will go back to their crime scene to see what they've done. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my oh my oh my. <clears throat> All right. Well, dear Mr. Biden, I got I got to talk about him at least once a night or twice a night, you know. <laughs> but this isn't funny. Biden tapping emergency oil reserves to bribe voters. President Joe Biden plans to release even more barrels of oil from the federal government's strategic reserves to keep gas prices low before the midterm elections. Now, I've did a couple videos on this. I hope this isn't one I've done. 
<clears throat> I always put them in a file, but doesn't mean I haven't done them before. They seem to repeat in the news, you know, that's news, so it's repeated, repeated, repeated through all the their news channels, papers, news broadcasts, whatever. Bloomingburg News reports that the Biden administration plans to release another 10 million to 15 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Preserve, Reserve. Let me get that correct. Biden's latest decision marks more than 200 million barrels set for release in less than two years as president, more than all previous presidents combined, according to the Wall Street Journal. He's always got to try to outdo somebody, don't he? But yet he don't understand what he's doing, what he's saying, what he's speaking. Saying and speaking, well, speaking more or less to a crowd, saying probably to himself up here, whatever. The oil reserves are currently at the lowest level since 1984. He's draining us. In every aspect of the way. <clears throat> Despite Biden's historic oil releases to bring down the cost of gasoline, the OPEC and nations announced their decision in October to cut oil production by 2 million barrels a day. The president expressed his disappointment with the OPEC and the Saudi Arabia's decision, despite administration officials working behind the scenes, urging them to delay their cuts until after the midterm elections. Bribery, bribery, bribery. Biden recently campaigned in California where gas prices are nearly $7 a gallon. When asked about prices approaching $7 a gallon in the state, Biden replied, well, that's always been the case here. Really? Despite gas prices rising again, Biden continues taking credit for gas prices declining from record highs in the summer. <clears throat> a lot of it is the result of getting the cost of living at the gas pump down by more. Now, even in California now, by more than a dollar nationally, and since the state start of summer. He said during a speech on Americans suffering from higher cost. Uh, original article, Joe Biden to release 10 to 15 million more barrels from emergency oil reserves. Britbart.com. You can go there and read it. <clears throat> you know, it's like, I don't know if you're like me or not, but I have to watch the sodium. And I open up a can of vegetables, and the first thing I do is I drain the juice, then I put them in a colander, and I rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse to get rid of all the salt that I possibly can. Because have you ever looked on the back of the can to see how much sodium is in one can of vegetables? And you got high blood pressure? You, you just don't want to do that. You want to rinse them off two or three, four, five times I do under ice cold water. And I keep rinsing until I feel secure that I've got most of the salt gone. Because all I use, I don't use salt, only Himalayan pink salt. That's the only thing that keeps my feet and legs from swelling up like balloons. I cannot use any table salt whatsoever. And so when I get canned vegetables, if I don't, I usually get fresh. But boy, I tell you, they're not what they used to be. No. And they rot so fast. I bring them home and I wash them as soon as I get them home from the store. I always wash them. My fresh, my cucumbers. Uh, I take and rinse off the head of lettuce. And I take off the outer leaves and I rinse uh, the inside leaves. Outside, inside leaves is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you know, after I pull all them leaf lo uh, loose leaves off, then I rinse the the head that's together. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain here. Duh. You, know? <laughs> you want to put me on Biden's team? <laughs> it wouldn't make good bear, wouldn't we? No. <laughs> but anyway, you get the drift. So always take the loose leaves off. 
you know. Now cabbage, I don't have to do that because that doesn't have loose leaves, but I still wash it. My carrots, if I get long carrots, like I put in sections to put in my pot roast, you know, I do it all. I wash everything I bring home from the store. Let me just put it that way. Yes, I even take a bleached uh, paper towel or wash rag with a little bleach on it or peroxide and I wash off all my cans because you never know. They're, those cans have been touched millions and trillions of times by millions and trillions, probably thousands of people, you know, from being canned from the factory, being packaged from the package people, you know, and putting in the package from those people, the handlers, and then to the stores and those handlers to the shelf, and then people come along and pick, 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 you know, <clears throat> just safeguards. That's what I call them. Just use safeguards on anything you should bring home from the store. That will make you feel better about you and your family, especially your little children and your babies, whatever that you have sanitized as much as you can. And that way keeps your family pretty well safe. Yeah, and be sure they wear a mask when they go outside anymore because of the announcement now that there's a strain out there that's going to be a hundred times worse than what we've been through. So wear a mask, whatever, and think about getting those cotton picking shots that make the pharmacies rich, doctors rich, and the people that are supposed to make these vaccines rich. You know, my God, if they keep shooting us up, that alone and already has killed so many people. What more can I say? I can't. Just be so careful. Think hard. Yeah, think hard. Okay, I'm going to close this video out. Look for some more information. I've got plenty lined up. And I'll be back. And let me find my little camera button here. I'm ready to close it off. And you are a blessing. God love.